Hey, this is a wall reaction video. We are going to be having some fun here. Uh, we got some fun lovers. We got uh, Jacob, Remzo, and Keaton, and Hody, and that's it. But uh, we wanted to keep the sticks in the mud at home. We are going to be uh, reviewing a, uh, we're going to be uh, poking fun at a video um, just for fun. And uh, it's going to be good. Uh, now, before I start the video, this is uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's appearance on Anderson Cooper. Um, and whenever I hear those two names together, I don't know which one to make fun of more. I mean, it's just it, it, both such. I know this is low hanging fruit, but that can be tasty fruit. Uh, yeah. AOC 360. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. The more AOC exposure we get, the better libertarians just look. I mean, really, I just can't expose. I, I can't get enough of her. It's just constant nutrition for 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 the libertarian cause. Uh, so let's go ahead and play this thing. And uh, guys, if you have something to rip her on, just start talking. How are you going to pay for all of this? No one asks how we're going to pay for this Space Force. Yes, everybody asks how you're going to pay for the Space Force. Uh, that's one of the big hiccups they have in Congress is trying to get stuff like that passed. <laughs> uh, some people ask. <laughs> you know, at least one or two. But uh, yeah. That's funny. Space Force is cool. Her thing isn't. Yeah, yeah, this is the, we want the stormtrooper future and the Death Star future. I don't want the, the green hippie future. Look, if you don't have a space force, the space terrorists win, Hody. That's how it works. <laughs> uh, Go to that, foreign the planets, kill foreign people. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, you know, this is our side of the constellation, and people keep trying to cross, and we have a, I mean, I, I am pro Milky Way borders. There, there's no reason from people from the Andromeda galaxy need to be coming over here. They need to yeah, fix man, their own I, galaxy. I've, I've seen the Klingons. They ain't cool. <laughs> uh, usually, rarely a good encounter with them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and I, I, I'm, again, not racist. I, I have friends that are Klingons, but, I, I mean, generally, they're <laughs> I'm not. I'm kind of racist my, against whatever. One of my Klingons best friends is, is Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I married a Klingon. I'm, I'm so <laughs> pro-Klingon. <laughs> All we right. all call it the Klingon virus. Yeah, <laughs> right. Paid for a two trillion dollar tax cut. We only ask how. Okay, serious problem when people refer to this. Oh, they don't ask how we're going to pay for the two trillion dollar tax cut. This is just this, this is one of the things I, I hate Trump on so many different levels, and, and and I'm sure you all do as well. And he's just mind numbing to listen to. But the bottom that. line is when he cut taxes, revenue went up. The assumption, of course, that she's making with a $2 trillion tax cut is that business would be exactly the same if we did the tax cut or if we didn't do the tax cut. We know that's not true. We, I, I got to give her some credit, though, because I think she, in her very short time in Congress, has mastered the part where political language is key because people just want to hear about all the cool shit. When you're running for a class council, no one wants to hear about how you're going to make the lunch lady stop smoking in the cafeteria and make sure that everyone gets an extra five minutes to get through their classes. They want to listen to the hot chick that's promising them field trips to Disneyland and no school on, you know, most days of the week. So, I mean, even though one has an actual idea and the other one's dumb as shit, the dumb as shit one sounds so much cooler. I guess. I mean, if it sounds cool, for me, tax cuts... I, I, am I been too libertarian too long to think that tax cuts sound cool? Is that is that is that just me in my echo chamber at this point? People keeping more of their own money is always cool, Hody. I felt like that was cool, but now I feel like you know that meme where he's like, "Hello, fellow teenagers." You know, I feel like that guy when I talk about tax cuts. At least you're not talking to people at the urinal. That's yes, yeah. I, 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 hey, we could have made an extra $2 trillion. Anyhow, this is something that frustrates me so bad when she talks about this, because it's like, any Democrat is just like, well, this was obviously a $2 trillion tax cut. Dude, dweebs, do you really think if we left taxes that were, where they were, the market was just going to miraculously gain another $2 trillion? Here's the way it works. You decrease revenue, or you, de I'm sorry, <laughs> you decrease taxes. That increases the amount of business, which is how we make more money. Is that... Did, did that fly over anybody's head? I feel like that was a single sentence and it's pretty self-explanatory. Pretty simple to understand. I think the problem is spending $5 trillion a year. I don't know. Um, mm. Well, uh, let's see how ASC wants to spend it. 
Uh, we pay for it on issues of housing, health care, and education. How do we pay for it? With the same exact mechanisms that we pay for military increases, for the Space Force, for all of these uh, ambitious policies. Why does she hate Space Force so much? <laughs> Why is she so anti-fun? It's just, I guess, is, is it the lowest hanging fruit? Why is she going after the cool stuff? Yeah, I don't know. Going to Mars is cool. That's fine. I mean, I'm against like government funds and gov new government programs and especially a new government military branch. But dude, I can almost let it slip because they like want to explore space. Like that's so cool to me. <laughs> I mean, people like NASA, right? Like, that's, that's one of the tough ones as a libertarian, right? Where it's like, oh, explain to me how we would have won the space race. And, NASA's and, always so close to everyone's heart. Right. Yeah, yeah it's NASA with guns. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Like, <laughs> like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Your spaceship with cannonballs. I mean, that's just, that, that's American right there. I, that just makes me feel more red, white, and blue. Uh, but, okay, so to get into it, I mean, how, so she wants to fund, she just says, oh, we're going to, do the green, the green New Deal the same way we fund everything else, which is, is we don't. Which is we don't. <laughs> that's exactly it. We don't fund everything else very well. We take a loss on it. So Has when she, she says seen Section Eight housing, like I know she grew up in the in the richer part of New York, but like, has she seen Section Eight housing? <laughs> now we got Ryan coming in here. Ryan, can you hear me all right, buddy? Yeah, can you hear me? There he is. There he is. Ryan, we're having some fun ripping on AOC. I imagine Ryan's Stop gonna. It. Ryan's here to do a giant cannonball in our pool. Ryan, <laughs> please help explain with the best sense of humor you can why Space Force isn't as cool as we feel it is. Space Force? Yeah. Why it's is just... that not cool? Ryan, please explain why you don't want to fight the bugs. Well, I think that. Um... I don't know about any bugs, but personally, in oh, space, they're coming. The bugs are coming. They're coming. That's why Space Force is there. <laughs> they're coming for your no. jobs, man. They're coming for they your said jobs. They, they said our hey, borders would get overflowed. Space Force wants my job. They can have it. <laughs> <laughs> the bugs, man. The bugs are coming for your job. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you, you heard us uh, in the run, run up to this, but she's saying we fund, uh, you know, this Green New Deal the same way we fund uh, uh, the, the Space Force and housing and whatnot like that. Mm. You got beef? You got no beef. What's, what, what do you got? Uh, I guess, so she's saying fund Green New Deal the same way we do Space Force and uh, I guess how do we, I don't know how we're funding Space Force. So. We're doing it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. We spend the money on it and we appropriate it. And after that, we just kind of shrug our shoulders and hope the market increases to yeah, cover it. Big ass money printing machine that they get all the money from. Right. I guess. Can't you wait know. for Blackwater space? Won't that be so awesome? That sounds <laughs> awful. That's ruining space. That's ruining space. Science fiction. The, the aliens are like, generation. send them back. <laughs> Science fiction used to be so optimistic and hopeful about yeah. space and all that. And then with our generation, it's all just been war. And, and don't get me wrong, I love Star Wars, but we have this very <laughs> dystopian view of space. And you can't fuck it, you have to kill it. <laughs> drill, cling on drill, right? I mean, isn't that the same we're going for now? I, I played Mass Effect. I, I think I can get into some alien stuff. I don't, I don't necessarily need them all gone. Now, I will go, I'll go out on a limb and say there's definitely parts of uh, the Green New Deal that I would rather fund than the militarization of space any more than it is if oh. we have to pick one or the other uh so you're so maybe that's why she's picking on space force is because maybe it's one of the goofiest uh things that we're spending money on that she's jealous she didn't come up with it it's definitely i wouldn't say i mean in the long list of government programs that could be considered goofy i don't know if space force is the goofiest one but it's certainly up there at, like one of the ones that you can easily make fun of just because of all the sci-fi movies and everybody loves space and, and you got the is there life out there is there alien life out there we got to go explore and if there is we got to shoot them up with a bunch of bullets you know <laughs> like i yeah. have hope when you explain the death star is not too goofy for me that that, that gives me hope i uh <laughs> the cold war all right, straw poll. Ryan, what's the goofiest thing we spend money on right now? Uh, war. Okay, Jacob. That, Ryan, that was too serious. Jacob. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. There's a ridiculous amount of money we spend on Viagra for government officials. So, um. oh, man. 
uh, Keaton. Uh, Go- I, I mean, the goofiest. I, I don't know. Rand Paul usually like posts things like weird stuff that the <laughs> government spends money on, like salmon mating habits or something like that. I don't know. They spend millions of dollars on researching really goofy stuff. I'm like, okay, why is my taxpayer dollars going to this? I always want to see the faces of the scientists that like sign up to be like, I really want to watch for when the salmon start. <laughs> like, <laughs> Remzo, what's the goofiest thing we spend money on right now? The sexually aggressive nature of Japanese white quails uh, um, exposed mm-hmm. to cocaine. Oh, I vote man. for that one. That one's a good one. Uh, that is yeah, a, that one wins. I think that even beats mine because I would a go. Fifteen bill, no, I'm sorry. That's a fifteen million dollar annual budget. I was about to say if that got into the billions, I might actually get angry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the Mormon in me talking, but the fact that they spend all this like like two hundred thousand dollars worth of liquor every year on like private flights, like for me, and that's like per Congress person. That's that's not even like two hundred thousand overall. That's like each one has like a two hundred thousand dollar line of credit just for <laughs> liquor, just for their airplanes. Could you, you know, imagine I, being the, the person? Be imagine imagine being the person that goes and pitches the idea. I don't even know who who do you even talk to to pitch the idea to to study the sexual aggressive nature of quail. And then you well, get that's a what happens whenever grand. you drink that much liquor. You come up with these ideas. <laughs> it's all so. connected. Dude, I've got, I'm I'm in the wrong job opportunity. I need to go <laughs> and just like drink myself to death and then go and pitch sexual aggressive study of quails to the this is maybe why we need flying and driving laws right because i mean if we're gonna have a space force we can't we got to make sure they're sober right i mean it's just sober rocket man some (laughs) amount of responsibility but it is sobering to to see someone like aoc go why don't we fund these ideas the same way we fund these other big costly programs which is we just said we don't fund them we just we kick the can down the road and put the cost on like the grandkids oh the great someone's going to pick up the tab but it's not going to be us and you know it, it is it's 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 wild that that, that that is so rampant and that is the biggest concern if we're being ser- genuine who pays off our debt we don't they do our kids do somebody else you know it, it's it's something that we really want now that we can't afford now that we're going to make somebody else pay for later and that's just the nature of it uh aoc i guess she just likes her stuff better than our stuff and better than boring stuff i know she likes her boring stuff now uh legitimately and to ryan's point there probably is some things in the green new deal that maybe are slightly cooler than pigeons having sex on cocaine I want to watch. <laughs> That's <laughs> see. Well, now I guess we know what these scientists, these creepy scientists that sign up for it. Look I want like. to see what the quail money shot looks like. They look <laughs> like Remzo. <laughs> Where do I subscribe? It's way different when. How much money crack. do you need? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it the scientists that are on crack, or is it the pigeon? I don't understand. Either way, the quail yeah, that are on crack. Are. It's like when the uh, CIA was putting uh, dolphins on LSD to <laughs> see if they could communicate with. Wait, uh, say guys- that again. <laughs> I want to hear you say that again. The CIA was experimenting with dolphins and LSD, dosing dolphins with extreme amounts of LSD. Now, that one actually makes awesome. at least a little sense because I think that dolphin brains and human brains are somewhat so similar. closely. But... This is why I'm pro-eating dolphins. We can't let them ever be the top species. <laughs> I, I think AOC's brain and dolphins' brains are pretty close together. Uh, it's pretty good. Have you uh, seen the tricks those dolphins do? I don't think she's capable of that, SeaWorld. <laughs> Let me see you put your flippers behind your ears. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, uh, Paul. hey Paul, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great, Hody. Paul, what's yeah. the most ridiculous thing you've seen government spend stuff on? Oh, the most ridiculous thing. I don't know. Uh, that is a difficult one. Um, you could literally say the most random thing in your head and it probably gets... It's probably being funded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, not being funded. We're spending money on it. We're trying to find the funding on it. Us, right? Right, yeah. No, uh, boy. I mean, probably the red line in Indianapolis. <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to spend a hundred million dollars to simulate light rail uh to replace bus lines that already existed yeah that's and, two on the ground we're just, I, we got our heads in space right now. i don't even know what that means but it sounds like it needs a hundred million dollars i don't know does it involve <laughs> cocaine uh i'm sure some of the city councilors have that aspect covered 
if you can find a way to ease the words lower middle class and commuting into this, I think you got yourself a hundred million dollars. I think that's all you gotta, you just gotta decorate it a little bit. All right, uh, let, let's go ahead and play some more of this clip. That was hilarious. There are Back it up a couple seconds. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, yeah, let me, let me, let's lead you in. Here you go, AOC, take it away. Ambitious policies. There are Democrats obviously who are worried about your effect on the party. Democratic Senator Chris Kuhn said about left-leaning Democrats, if the next two years is just a race to offer increasingly unrealistic proposals, it'll be difficult for us to make a credible case we should be allowed to govern again. Oh, because the Democrats never have spending races. What do you think the Democratic Party will become? What? <laughs> this is, AOC better not take us, you know, to the point where, they, where we're spendocrats. No, we're always fiscally conservative. We don't want AOC to take us to this dark place. Right? Because before it, it is, they had, the, they were, their belts were buckled so tightly. Yeah, it is very weird that the, the, you see, and it's almost because you see the Democratic establishment going against like the Bernie Sanders and the AOC. It's, it's like they're going against completely what they, like AOC and Bernie Sanders called the bluff of the Democratic Party. They said, okay, well, this is the platform that we're going to run on. These people are okay with spending money as long as it's for the common good. So they just called their bluff, and now the Democratic establishment is having their oh shit moment where even Anderson Cooper is sitting there grilling AOC about spending money. Like, who would have thought? Yeah, if it doesn't well, have cocaine, space, or animals, I'm not in. <laughs> and it's funny because the Democratic establishment has no problem spending money on war and space force. Like, they sign those. Nancy, I've seen Nancy Pelosi sign those spending bills that Trump gets on his desk. She signs it off. So they have no problem spending money. AOC does have a point to where she's like, hey, why don't we talk about spending money on, I don't know, things that sound nice. Like housing, like yeah. health care for everybody, housing for everybody. Why do we have to spend trillions of dollars on military and war? She's got a point. But at a certain degree, you're like, okay, well, how do we fund those things? And she has no answer. Because Space Force, bitch. Unfortunately, it's not in this clip. And I've, I've, I've found that CBS, you, it's limited to all access. Do you guys remember this interview when, she, when they were like, well, we did the math and there's no possible conceivable scenario in which you're, you can raise enough money, even though you proposed it. And she's just like, well, we millennials are, are so tired of being told that we can't raise enough money. And so, you know, if we tax them out of the country, Will, they will always be millennial. It was like one of this, like... She's like the Sarah Palin of the left. Yeah. <laughs> For a That's little, a massive a bit. disservice to AOC. <laughs> 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 I can see the funding from my house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah. want to go to space to fair, or not? <laughs> with AOC's eyes, I think she could see into the future with those eyes she, that she has. She's like always like bugged out, and she's like, I can see where the money's going to come from. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> it's I, up here. And I agree that this is low hanging fruit. AOC does not always say stupid things. This yes. this interview got universally panned. I mean, this was just one. I I am aware that I cherry picked this. This was the fattest grapefruit getting underhand thrown to Barry Bonds in the height of his steroid, you know, induced fury, and it's just going to get clobbered. But I just wanted to have some fun with it. So I I understand that most of the time she has a point, but this one was like you, you almost wonder if she got like kicked in the head by a horse before the interview. You're just like. <laughs> You, do you want to do this over? Do you want to wait? Should we postpone? Like, you just not, don't feel right today. Yeah, it is interesting. Apparently, I went way too low when I talked about getting kicked in the head by a horse. Let's go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I, I, I've head gone... by a sexually active <laughs> quail on cocaine. There we right. go. Talking that's about fun. closing the borders to the Milky Way was fine, but as soon as I talk about something that actually happens, that's, that's too real, Hoods. <laughs> My <laughs> lost a family member to a horse getting, kicking in him in the head. Yeah, my favorite my favorite congressman's been kicked in the head by a horse. So that's not funny. All right, here we go. Yeah, take it down about twenty percent there, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Govern oh. again. What makes it unrealistic? How to pay for it. We pay more per capita in health care. <laughs> he was pretty quick on the trigger that anderson cooper uh, he, he he gets uh some flack for being too left-leaning but that was pretty good right <laughs> he's actually like one like you know in all seriousness like he actually is one of my favorite reporters on tv 
I mean, it's, I have very low standards, but he is one of my favorites because during like the 2016 Democratic debates, like he wasn't easy on Hillary Clinton. He wasn't even easy on Bernie Sanders. So, I mean, whenever he says anything remotely that sounds like commentary against a Republican, of course, he's always hated, but I've given him the chance to show me that he could be an equal opportunist in his questions. So I got to give him all the credit where credit's due. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. I, I'm a, I would say like, I'm an Anderson Cooper fan. Like if Anderson Cooper and Chris Wallace ever somehow joined together and had a show together, I'd watch it. Every oh man, day. fuck Chris Wallace. We worked in the <laughs> same building. We worked in the same building and we had to share an elevator after we swiped in with our passes. Fox is on one floor, FreedomWorks is on the other. And I would show up very early around the same time that all the Fox people have to show up to get all Foxified with their makeup because that man looks like shit. But anyway, like three days in a row, me and Chris Wallace are showing up early at the same time because I have a project to work on. And literally the first time he, I see him like rushing to the elevator and he's sees me and I'm kind of smiling because I'm like, fuck, that's Chris Wallace. And he closes the elevator on me. So I'm like, oh, well, that's a bad opportunity. Maybe I'll happen tomorrow. So we run into each other again the next day and he looks at me and I look at him and I'm kind of nervous about saying anything because it's Chris Wallace. And I notice that he's starting to kind of hustle a little bit. So I'm like, shit, is Chris Wallace trying to get to the elevator before me? Cause I was a good five feet ahead of him. Next thing he gets in the elevator, I'm like, Oh, Mr. Wallace. And he presses the button and it closes again. So then the third day, the third fucking day, I am, we walk in the same time. I actually came in through another entrance to see if maybe things would change up a little bit. No, the dude starts rushing again. This time I'm like, oh, this fucker's doing it on purpose. He gets in the elevator and I said, Mr. Wallace, put your hand over the door. So, you know, that way it doesn't open. And I'm like, can you do that, please? And he's like, I can't hear you. I'm like, you just heard me. Keep the door open. And then he moves his hand because for a second he thought about sharing the elevator. No, the hand goes back and it goes to the button and he closed it. And that was when I was fucking done with Chris Wallace. (laughs) I can see that being frustrating because he always has that smile, right? Like regardless of what he's talking about, that like slight smile where he's like, so, you know, there's, there's a thousand troops today that were bombed at a wedding and he's got that smile the whole time. And I'm like, Oh, I, your facial expression. So I can see him closing the, or closing the elevator with that smile on his face. (laughs) See, See, Rimzo, you're just not petty enough. You need to make it your goal to show up there solid for a week. Wait until you see him coming, smile, and shut the door. Oh, it, I should have yeah, done no, that. No, you, he takes the low road, you go nuclear. Nobody knows petty knows. like Paul Copeland, guys. This is... This yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah, when they go low, we go lower. That's yeah. the model you want to adopt. Well, if yeah. you want to tell me that address, I'll just go and try to get his autograph. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Star Wars Episode Three. The low ground's good, right? Wait. No, no. Right? No, oh, no, the low ground's not good. <laughs> oh, the low ground. Oh, I learned the, the exact ground. opposite lesson. <laughs> Guys, I might have to cancel this whole series. I, I, <laughs> I learned something wrong. All right, take it away, AOC. Let's go per capita in healthcare and education for lower outcomes. That's true. Uh, We spend a lot of money and we aren't good at what we spend the money on. So why then is she advocating for spending more money on something else when we're really bad at spending the money on the things we currently spend money on? I mean, it's the classic uh, problem that I have with the left is they have the right diagnosis. Like, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, that's, uh, that's cancer. Uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna saw off your leg. <laughs> <laughs> Correct so, diagnosis, wrong prognosis. Like, give me come an on. IV drip, drip of canned cheese, please. We're gonna saw off your kid's leg. Sorry, you guys are gonna pay for it. The we people your children's legs. don't have clean water. Let's spend money on pigeons fucking well on cocaine. F- few there billion. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're, you know what, we haven't quite got to the Flint, Michigan, like to the bottom of that crisis yet. We're still working on it. But poor people. I think we really need to ban air travel and red meat. And that's what I proposed in this. Bill. I think that's, <laughs> that's what we need. <laughs> that's, thank you. She's saying the things I think in my head. That's like my worry with AOC is she's saying the things that like my leftist friends are thinking in their heads. Because I'm like, I, at that point, I don't, I don't know how to relate. Like, I don't know what to do. I, I would just be like, oh, huh, is that what you think? Oh, she, she does seem like the one that just kind of spitballs out loud 
but then double down <laughs> doubles down whenever she's challenged on the spitball idea. It's like, I thought you were just spitballing here. Why are you, why are you holding this so close to the vest? Like rebuilding every building in America to be energy efficient <laughs> and de demolishing it and rebuilding every building in America. That doesn't seem financially feasible. <laughs> what, what, I love, what I love is when she becomes a literal meme and to any severe criticism or even minor criticism you give her, like she, sometimes she'll just snap at people like, well, you hate the children. And it's like, when did this turn into a 4chan chat room? <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah she, uh, she, 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 now in, the, in some cases, it, now you might recall the Green New Deal. That was up on online for like 15 minutes. And then they're like, oh, is spending like $2 trillion to make sure that people can't travel to see their relatives not popular? It was a draft. I should probably it was a draft. take this down. Yeah, it was a, it was a draft. That was a, I mean, I don't know. You know, the red meat thing was, I don't, I don't know, man. I, replacing every car within five years. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, you know. We uploaded the wrong document, but we took another three months to, to upload the correct document. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're working on just fixing that typo. It's, we, I mean, we don't have a Taking new one a up really yet. long time. About you might six be years. We're rewriting this thing, but we're definitely not. We just uploaded the wrong one. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that must be what happened. Uh, all right, uh, let me go ahead and have her finish here. Than many other nations. And so for me, what's unrealistic is, is what we're living in right now. How are you? All right, that's the end of the video that I have. Be very hey, brief. And video. she raises a good point at that, the end there. It's, this might be unrealistic, spending all the amount of money and you know tearing down every building, getting rid of air travel, but staying on the same course we are is also incredibly unrealistic. Yep. So that so, is true. So what does she want to do? So we have the unrealistic and then she wants to just, <laughs> hey, if this is going to be unrealistic, let's stack another unrealistic. It's like that double down double sandwich down. at KFC, you know? <laughs> it's like, all right, you know you're not supposed to eat fried chicken. So let's, you know what, just screw it. Let's do two pieces of fried chicken with bacon in the middle. All right, let's. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if they run out, you stab someone in the parking lot. You yes. saw KFC released. I don't know if you guys saw an ad for it, but it literally gave me heart palpitations. It was a fried chicken sandwich with donuts on each end. It was like Krispy Kreme donuts. I was like, this is America. <laughs> and they got rid of super size at McDonald's, but KFC they is have like, direction. They're, right, they're, trying to, <laughs> they're trying to kind of replace that void that I have, you know? I think my personal trainer like forbids me from watching daytime television because of that reason. He like schedules the workouts for, to, so that I like miss those commercials. I need that donut sandwich right now. <laughs> All right. Well, we have had uh, some fun uh, ripping on him here. Uh, uh, AOC, what's, uh, what's your favorite uh, AOC moment so far? Her whole career. Favorite. Ooh. When she said we we're all going to die in 12 years. A good one. So it, 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 just oh, watching 12 years an asteroid's gonna hit us and she's gonna be like out of spite i told you we should have had space force <laughs> we should have had space force develop that giant neck slingshot i've seen armageddon we can do it if only we had space force we would have been you know we would have been able to escape that green new deal i i think it's just a it, it's like a compounding problem it's like that that now it's their turn to have the solution now we actually need a space force <laughs> how about you guys favorite aoc moments oh, there's just so many see mm -hmm. ryan means that non-sarcastically by the way <laughs> ryan is actually yeah so, uh, uh, you, you are on record by saying besides justin amash she's the most libertarian person in congress correct i'm on record as saying uh Ooh. that wait yeah she either is or she, she's the most libertarian or second most libertarian member of Congress. And I'll okay. die on that hill. Okay, okay. I was like, don't, don't Green New Deal this to me. Put it, <laughs> put it out there and leave it out there. <laughs> uh, uh, anybody want to debate Ryan Lindsay? Gosh, not a, I don't think this is the episode to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I mean, in a few minutes here, we're going to look at a uh, Steven Crowder video, which is about equally as hilarious. We'll have fun ripping on the other side, too. Uh, but, but, but yeah, the, uh, I, I think this is, this is obviously the low light of AOC's career. She's had several when, it, when, it, when you talk as much as she does. Maybe that's what I like most about her. She always talks. And 
So you're always going to be saying I, I something it. wrong when you're always talking. Well, I talking. love it when she turns into a wine ant. She becomes really relatable when she's on Instagram, like, you know, eating a bag of Cheez-Its and like drinking and then saying like, we're all going to die in 12 years and I won't have children and white people suck. But have you seen my boyfriend? And it's like, <laughs> she, I don't, here, here, here's the weird thing about her. I have actually no personal animosity towards her. And I have personal animosity towards a lot of politicians who I agree most with most things on so it's this really weird dynamic probably because i live in the swamp but when i think of people who are like you know out to actually cause problems i don't see her as an actual threat i yeah. see her as like a severely disabled yeah. person who's been like get a small hat and told to dance like <laughs> no one wants this but it's what we're so, forced to watch Disney. i was so with no, you at the like, beginning there <laughs> So you had you Ryan. Me. You had so him. yeah, it's a it's a very common <laughs> phenomenon with us libertarians that we uh, tend to hate those that are closest to us. I don't know what that says about our movement, but it's probably not good. No, uh, not I, good. I think she had one beautiful moment, uh, especially when she was talking about what do you do when you counter like white white supremacists, and most of them are stuck in an echo chamber, and how you should not reach out to them in anger, but reach out to them in love. And sh so she'll have just this beautiful moment that I want to share with all my friends. I kind of can't because AOC said it. And I'm just like, this will be great. And then it's like later that day, it's like, obviously, if you're still eating red meat, you know, you, you don't care about the future of this country. And you're just like, well, <laughs> that was, that, that was like five seconds of beauty just fall. It, it, it's like having the shizziest ending ever. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just, it, it's like the Godfather part three, where you're just like one and two are really good, you know, like some uh, good, some go. bad, I'll take it. <laughs> and then Godfather part three comes around. And you're just like, Oh, that was a money grab. She, that was no. kind of like a walking Trump tweet, isn't it? Because like some <laughs> of his tweets, you start to read them and you go like, Oh my God, you know, like these wars are crap. We're spending way too much money. I don't know why I was. I would love to see a buddy there. cop show with Trump and AOC. I think that oh, would God. actually be really good. That Yeah. Just, just the furthest of two extremes would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, you guys got any, uh, uh, get any last wisecracks before we, uh, we, we put this on, on ice on AOS and uh, let her, let her ice from her libertarian burns. What was the uh, ice a reference to her repeatedly calling to abolish ice? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another shining moment. Yeah. <laughs> Well, because if we abolish ICE and their salaries, you know, then we can finally, <laughs> finally have sex with Klingons. And we'll keep just... away the space Mexicans. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'll let y'all go. I'm going to go uh, watch some uh, pigeons have sex. And uh, I, I put out a bunch of powdered sugar. Uh, sorry, we're on air, so I can't say <laughs> the other thing for him to. Uh, and I'm going to study that and uh, get paid a couple tr billion by the government to do it. So I'm going to itch nice. my neck for a little while and look at you with these <laughs> empty eyes. And uh, thanks for joining me. We'll see you all later. See ya.